Madam Speaker, when I saw that there was going to be a bill rushed to the House floor with five days left in the legislative calendar without a committee hearing, I thought maybe the Democratic majority would be rushing to the floor a bill to address inflation that's clobbering the American people. No. I thought maybe they would be rushing to the floor a bill to address the crime crisis that's plaguing cities across the United States. But no. I thought maybe there would be a bill rushed to the House floor without a committee hearing 51 hours after the text was introduced to address the crisis taking place at our border. The millions of immigrants coming into the United States illegally, the fentanyl that's coming across our U.S.-Mexico border and killing thousands of Americans. But no. So what's so important that a bill needs to be rushed to the House floor without any committee hearing to review and analyze the bill? And it's the Presidential Reform Act. Is the ranking member on the subcommittee on elections in the House administration, I have to admit I'm disappointed we didn't have the opportunity to thoughtfully review the legislation before us. In fact, we haven't had a hearing in the subcommittee on elections since July. So I think now is our moment, unfortunately with only 30 minutes on the minority side, to actually dive in and analyze the legislation before us. And with any important piece of legislation, in particular one like this, that impacts our national elections and the elections of our president, the first question I ask myself is will the bill before us boost people's confidence in our election process? And the bill fails the test. And I'd highlight in particular section four of this bill that gives candidates a loophole to define what a catastrophic event is, which might include a natural disaster or even a national health emergency like COVID. Why is this so important? The candidate for president could, up to a full day following the election, request an extension for the election by up to five days if they feel there is a, quote, catastrophic event, end quote, that was sufficient to prevent a substantial portion of a state's electorate from casting a ballot on election day. The bill doesn't properly define catastrophic event. Often in this body, we take the time in committee in regular order to understand what the terms of the bill mean, to give an opportunity to improve the text, to provide certainty and clarity to the American people going forward. We're let down by the fact that we're not following regular process in this case. Instead of continuing to undermine faith in the elections process, we should instead pursue common sense legislation that supports election integrity, respects the Constitution. It's time has expired. I'd like to yield an additional minute to the gentleman from Wisconsin. The gentleman is recognized for an additional minute. That, that respects the Constitution and federalism. Legislation like the American Confidence in Elections Act that Ranking Member Davis introduced back in July would be perfect to bring to the floor to enhance the integrity in our elections. And we heard earlier the majority leader mention that there's ambiguity in our election system, and that's what this is about. Well, if that's what this is about, if we are trying to actually remove the ambiguity in our election system, which is a very worthy cause, why not have a hearing on this bill. I haven't yet heard one person from the majority side explain why this bill is being rushed to the floor 51 hours after the text was introduced without using the consideration of the Senate bill as the basis of this legislative text. And I think that question needs to be answered today. We need to actually dive into what this bill does to actually allow the American people to have confidence in our election system. So I remain disappointed the House did not take the thoughtful approach that the Senate takes, and I urge my colleagues to vote against the bill.